Good morning, everyone. Um, good morning, good day, good evening for those who are joining us. Um, my name is Yuri Dunstuk. I'm a clinical research director at Profaction Technology. And uh, thanks to our colleagues from Skill Innovation Company in India, who nicely organized this webinar, we will talk today about implementation of pressure control jet injection and management of dermal scars. Uh, what I understood from uh, from my colleagues that uh, today we have a, a kind of mixed crowd of attendees who already familiar with this uh, treatment modality, who those are who are very experienced with uh, this kind of treatment, and also there are people who are just curious what is all about, who are hurt probably about this technology. So I will, in my materials today, will try to mix uh, um, uh, mix the material that I want to present. So it will be interesting for both uh, types of uh, attendees. Um, so um, today we'll be talking about uh, jet injection. And for those who are not very familiar about the jet injections and who are traditionally injecting with a needle, um, I want to mention that um, jet injection, it's um, based on uh, liquid jet technology. Liquid jet is uh, something that you uh, see in everyday life everywhere. A, formally, it's a, um, it's a stream of fluid, pressurized stream of fluid. It can travel certain distance without dispersion and uh, can penetrate media easily, quickly, without any uh, damaging to the media itself. In our case, uh, jet injection implemented for delivery or administration of various materials into the skin. And um, the optimal uh, device or best device on the market um, that can provide this jet injection currently is Enerjet device uh, which represents the mobile system with the software that can control or actually not con can control but controls the uh, treatment process mm, the system has a detached applicator detached applicator that uh, uh, the users load materials that you want to inject and actually provides the injection process. In order to demonstrate the principle of jet injection, I am um, going to show you this small video in which um, color, um, colored normal cell line was injected uh, into polyacrylamide gel uh, using this energy device. And um, this, uh, in this video, you can see that the jet or stream of fluid of colored fluid goes into the media very quickly, and once inside the media, it starts dispersing. Let's see. And that's exactly what happened when um, the jet injection is injected into the skin. So we have a stream of fluid that goes inside the skin and disperses. Dispersion is quite unique because it's um, dispersion is multi-directional, uh, so it creates a total area of dispersion and that's similar to the um, sphere. So it allows us to, uh, in one injection, to cover quite a big area in the skin. The, the speed of the jet is quite high, 150 meters per second. It allows to penetrate the skin very quickly without um, any pain or with very low uh, level of discomfort. The entry point of, uh, of the jet into the skin is also very, very small. It's only 200 microns which it can be uh, correlated with the regular needle size uh, 34, 35 gauge, which is very, very small. Also, um, as I mentioned, uh, once inside the uh, skin, the dispersion 
uh, is uh, covering quite big area and the depth of penetration is also can be varying uh, providing uh, dispersion up to six millimeters of depth the control of penetration is uh, provided by software of the device so it means that we can reach not only superficial dermis, we can reach uh, more prof deep dermis, we can reach uh, some subcutaneous areas, or in the case of large bulky scars, we can even reach uh, the core of the scar, which is uh, therapeutically is very attractive. And the uh, average area of dispersion is approximately 10 millimeters or one centimeter um, approximately because uh, in some uh, in some uh, skin conditions uh, it might be much more let's say when we're dealing with well hydrated young skin or when we're dealing with more aged uh, dehydrated skin the area of the total maximum area of dispersion is less than 10 Um, in the tissue, the, um, as I mentioned, the spread of the drugs, uh, three, uh, actually spread of, not the drug, spread of the uh, drug droplets, uh, it has a effect that reminds um, kind of uh, nano bullets that go through the tissues. And once this spread is happens, this nano bullet travels inside the tissue and creates thousands of small channels that filled with the drug that you um, that you injected. These uh, micro channels causes uh, trauma to the surrounding soft tissue of the skin and immediately stimulates the healing process. And as a result of this healing process, uh, regeneration of the skin happens uh, to a certain degree. So overall, jet injection with this uh, drug, it creates um, a dual or double effect, uh, which is synergistic effect. From one side, this uh, pressurized stream of fluid creates a uh, mechanistic destructive, we can mention the word, destructive effect on the, on the tissue. And from another side, the drug uh, provides additional uh, effect through its, uh, 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 bioactivity um, characteristics. It might be either a generative effect, let's say in case of uh, when you're injecting hyaluronic acid in the tissue, or it might be um, reverse uh, cell proliferation effect, uh, let's say when you're injecting, for example, corticosteroids. And we'll be mentioning about that uh, a little bit uh, when we talk about the specific treatment approach for certain scars. Um, histology studies uh, that um, that were published uh, in, the, in the past and recently demonstrate that um, um, this dispersion of the material following the jet injection doesn't create any damaging effect to the epidermis. It um, uh, provides uniform dispersion of injected material and you can see in these three slides um, uh, injection of um, injection of um, just a second injection of um, uh, tattoo ink in the pig skin and you can see that uh, there is no uh, damage to the epidermis there is uh, the structure of the skin is uh, maintained, the blood vessels are not severed or damaged, and um, this uh, histology stu uh, studies demonstrated there is a direct relationship between the pressure under which the uh, material is injected into the skin and the depth of penetration, meaning that the higher the pressure, the deeper you can um, deliver your medication. So in some cases, when you need to target um, target more superficial um, uh, dermis, you're obviously using lower uh, level of pressure, like here. 
And in case you need to reach subcutaneous fat, you need to um, set the pressure parameters on your device uh, much higher. But in, though, in, in any cases, you can see that uh, dispersion is very, very uniform. So let's talk more about on the subject, and we'll start um, discussing the treatment of atrophic scars, atrophic acne scars, with uh, um, jet injections, specifically with the energy device. Um, the principle of jet treatment is uh, based again on the principle of jet injections, in which the stream of fluid uh, penetrates the scar and, and uh, creates some kind of burst of the material, of injected material inside. In the case of atrophic scars, this um, injection provides um, what we call subcision effect. You're probably familiar with the needle subcision treatment of acne scars, um, where um, surgically, uh, with a needle, you surgically uh, severe the connection between the bottom of the scar and underlying tissue. With jet injection, um, we trying to reach the same effect, but more gently, less damaging to the tissue, because we using the stream of pressurized stream of fluid that goes into the directly into the bottom of the scar, and this spread of the material creates damaging or severing effect to the uh, fibrotic bands of fibrotic tissue that connects the. Uh, bottom of the scar or of the scar and to with the underlying tissue. As, remember that I mentioned that there is a, with a spread of uh, uh, material inside the skin, we create in thousands of small micro channels. And these micro channels is actually uh, lessening uh, lessening the um, connection between uh, and the scar tissue. Create becomes much more. Uh, loose and with the continuous uh, injections, we can achieve um, the detachment or the anchoring of the bottom of the scar uh, with the underlying tissue. Uh, based on that, the scar with the time became uh, became loose and starts raising up to the certain level where it can be on almost the same level as surrounding skin. Um, the choice of the drug that we recommend uh, to inject is uh, hyaluronic acid, but we prefer uh, hyaluronic acid with a certain uh, characteristic and feature, bi biological features. First of all, we, we recommend to inject cross-linked hyaluronic acid in order to provide uh, longer regeneration process. Uh, for deeper scars, uh, that's um, usually deeper, more fibrotic scars, uh, more age scars, the, our target is to um, provide the uh, enhanced feeling effect, to provide volumization of the, of the, of the, of the scar. And uh, we recommend to use Crosslink HA with low cohesivity, and high elastic, elastic modulus, which allows scar to be quickly uh, volumized, filled, and, and maintained for a certain period of time. When you're dealing with uh, more shallow scars, uh, let's say uh, young, uh, younger scars with uh, in the uh, younger, uh, good quality skin, uh, our target is not only to provide uh, colonization, but mainly provide regeneration with, uh, without excessive um, and long-term feeling effect. So in this case, um, materials with less uh, uh, with uh, less elasticity, elasticity and higher cohesivity will be preferable. Um, a 
regarding injection parameters, um, I, for those who are not very familiar with, uh, with uh, energy device, I want to mention that um, there are two uh, parameters that controls the treatment process. One is the pressure, the injection pressure, that, as I mentioned, controls the depth of penetration. And another parameter is a filling or dosage, or rather volume of the material that injected into the skin with each, um, each, um, with each, um, with each in shot. Um, so for pressure injections, uh, for pressure parameter, we recommend to use slightly lower uh, pressure because uh, because we want to uh, be careful with uh, injection and not to penetrate too deep into the tissue. So the starting point is pressure around 25 or 30 percent of the pressure scale and if you will see that there is no penetration you can titrate the pressure up until you achieve penetration uh, into the skull. Regarding the filling uh, filling volume we recommend to to uh, to have uh, to set the parameters uh, 70 or 80 microliters per each injection. So it means that approximately 0.07 milliliter or 0.08 uh, milliliter will be delivered into the scar with each injection. The, uh, the applicator should be directed uh, into the scar button. And um, in order to provide the optimal penetration, uh, we recommend to have a patient in supine position and um, the applicator should be positioned perpendicular to the skin surface and vertical to the um, ground level in order to, um, as I mentioned, provide the best penetration and avoid loss of material that sometimes happen when the, uh, the uh, applicator is positioned in the angle. In case you, that you have a large, wide, rolling scar, um, treatment of those scar, scar can be uh, can be uh, performed with uh, several injections in order to car to uh, cover the whole bottom of the scar that sometimes is much larger than uh, the area that you can cover with one injection. Um, the clinical results. Uh, I usually um, uh, can be observed as uh, some uh, initial uh, reaction that can be achieved immediately after the treatment and also they can evolve in more um, deferred uh, results that comes as a result of uh, regeneration process that you start with, uh, uh, with, uh, with the microtrauma or trauma that you created in the scar tissue. So initially, you will um, you will notice a temporary feeling effect that gives patient very high satisfaction rate. Right? But um, this short-term effect, first of all, initial effect is quite short-term effect because we provide the volume uh, volumization of the material and material usually H A is providing uh, hydrophilic uh, hydration effect. But with the time, this uh, hydrophilic material is has a tendency to be reabsorbed. And as this filling effect uh, subsides, the, the tissue regener regeneration will start and uh, it will correct the atrophy permanently and that um, uh, regeneration effect will provide more uh, deferred or long-term effect of the treatment. And uh, the effect is long-lasting, of course, and it's based on the stimulation of the, surround, uh, the tissue surrounding the, the scars. Uh, mainly, uh, it will result in replacement of uh, collagen or stimulation of the new collagen and um, 
the final effect uh, will be represented as uh, not only the raising bo uh, bottom of the scar to the level of surrounding skin, but also um, will result in the tissue regeneration. And uh, in this slide, I'm just showing you a um, couple of uh, cases of the treatment, effective treatment of uh, uh, trophic acne scars. Um, this uh, case was treated with uh, with uh, cross link uh, Bellotera, and this case, uh, in this case, we treated the patient with uh, uh, Profiler from Ipsa uh, company. Now let's move to uh, treatment of hypertrophic scars and telluroids. The mechanistic effect of jet injection can be represented as um, as a direct damaging effect of the jet uh, of the jet dispersion of jet injection and dispersion of the material inside the scar. So with the enforced um, pressurized jet, we achieving effective scar infiltration. And again, the spread of material inside the scar creates this um, thousand of microscopic trauma uh, channels and small cavities that uh, loosen the structure, tight structure of the uh, hypertrophic scar or calories. Also, um, this um, spread or dispersion of these tiny uh, nano bullets creates a mechanical tear of uh, scar tissue. Uh, we also uh, notice that um, we, with pressurized injection, we're providing the instant blanching and uh, immediate lock, uh, shutdown of the excessive microcirculation, typical for hypertrophic scars and colloids. And the, this pressurized uh, pressure applied to the scar um, is very similar to the occlusion effect of compression therapy. Um, recommended for the treatment of calories. And this diagram, this sketch is actually represents what happens in the scar after the spread of material. And we see that there is a loose structure and a loose, uh, uh, loose bundles of the tight collagen inside the scar. Um, in order to um, to discuss what kind of drugs uh, we recommend for treatment of the scar, I need to mention that uh, currently for for intralesional treatment of uh, hypertrophic scars and keloids, um, international guidelines recommend to inject either corticosteroids or 5-fluorouracil or combination. There are um, the recent uh, publications exploring use of other uh, of other materials such as uh, interferon, uh, botulinum toxin, bleomycin, uh, but still they are um, they mention in the literature all under investigative uh, investigative approach. So, from our experience, uh, we um, initially decided to, um, to uh, recommend treatments uh, using corticosteroids. We achieved certain experience, and um, recently we, can, uh, uh, we uh, completed the study in which we uh, in injected combination of corticosteroids and 5-fluorouracil. Because um, this combination uh, is uh, providing less, uh, less, uh, less, uh, less adverse events uh, comparing to the monotherapy of each drug. So um, the, uh, the the mechanism or uh, 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 mechanism action of each drug. 
provides uh, either suppression of chronic infl inflammation, typical for hypertrophic scars and colloids, or inhibition of the rapid proliferation of the scars. For uh, corticosteroids, uh, we recommend to use methylcobenzalone as a diet or triamcinolone in 40 milligrams per milliliter. Um, and also, um, this uh, therapy can be mixed, as I mentioned, with fluorouracil uh, at a one to nine ratio. However, I have to mention that there is no um, uniform opinion in the literature what um, the what is the optimal ratio um, for this combination. And our experience. Um, is based on this one to nine ratio, and we saw that it provides good clinical effects and has very low rate of uh, adverse events. Sorry, we're stuck. Um, so we have to restart the program. Something happened on the way. Okay, I apologize for these technical problems, but it happens all the time. So let me go to the point where we stop. Sorry. Okay. Uh, regarding injection approach, um, since we're dealing with the uh, uh, hypertrophic scars or, uh, or colloids, the, um, the treatment must be more aggressive comparing to compared to the atrophic scars. We recommend to uh, treat. Uh, the lesions in one centimeter grid covering the whole surface of the of the scars um, injection should be uh, uh, directed vertically to the scar. When you're dealing with the larger uh, scar or bulky scar, injection can be also um, directed from the side. The endpoints of penetration is uh, should be creation of uh, this whitening area, and uh, we uh, that we can represent the blanching effect on the scar tissue. And uh, the, the protocol that we recommend is uh, um, there should be several treatments. The number of treatments, unfortunately, is not fixed, it depends on the uh, type of the scar or bigger. Uh, scars, obviously, you will need uh, several uh, treatment sessions for smaller scars. Uh, you might uh, achieve good clinical effect with uh, two or three treatments. The treatments should be um, performed every two or three weeks. Um, from, our, from our experience, um, the scars that uh, uh, located in the uh, upper chest, we notice that they require more uh, a higher number of treatments, 10, 12 treatments, until you reach flattening of the skin. Uh, with the treatment of the calloids, you are looking for uh, shrinking of the scar. Scars uh, should be became more uh, softer with normalization of the scar. Of the color. So, um, yeah, regarding treatment parameters, uh, pressure should be adjusted according to the uh, ability to penetrate. Uh, treatment of hypertrophic scars and colloids obviously requires much higher um, 
much higher uh, pressure comparing to the atrophic scars. We recommend to start for 45 and 50 percent of the uh, treatment scale, of the pressure scale. Uh, filling level um, also uh, needed to be increased. Uh, from uh, now, our practice we using 80 to 90 microliters for each shot, and um, I want to show you a small video. I hope it's working. Uh, that actually represents um, the treatment process. Unfortunately, it's not working very well, but at least you will have the idea. So, um, in case of these uh, scars, or in this case, it's a keloid on the uh, left shoulder, we inject it directly into the scar, and you can see there is a, a creation of whitening or blanching effect in the tissue. Uh, which uh, allows us to decrease uh, or temporarily shut down uh, microvasculature and uh, achieve nice spread of uh, injected material. In this case, in this case, it's a triamcin alone, 40 milligram per milliliter in, in the scar. In case of um, bulky, massive scars, we recommend to use um, what we call pressure sandwich injections because uh, we not only require to inject material in the, into the superficial area of the scar, but also within much deeper because uh, we're trying to achieve, uh, achieve full saturation of the scar with injected material. So um, what we um, what we implemented is a two tier uh, of injection where um, you, you you're treating the scar initially with a, let's say medium level of pressure let's say 45 50 percent of settings and then you're doing the second round of the treatment of the injections at much higher pressure. Uh, let's say 80, 90 percent of the injections. And from my experience, which is good clinical results and uh, um, uh, absence of regrowth up to uh, 12 months after the last treatment. Uh, here you can see a few examples of the treatment of keloids uh, after piercing, after trauma, after acne. Um, is another case for which, uh, in which a uh, combination of 5 review and corticosteroid was used. And after uh, eight treatments, you can see that there were good results of uh, decreasing the size of the loads. Um, I also uh, want to uh, speak with you about uh, less uh, orthodox let's use the word orthodox approach for treatment of hypertrophic scars. Mm, um, so we, we're getting more and more experience and achieving good uh, clinical results of using hyaluronic acid for treatment of hypertrophic scars. And um, the theory or kind of our understanding of uh, mechanism is that uh, injection of exo, uh, exogenous AHA provides certain biomodulatory effects in the scars. And in, in this uh, flow chart, you can see that from one side, there is, a, uh, there is a regulation of cellular response to the growth factors and fibroblast activities. There is uh, also possibility that, uh, uh, possibility that uh, uh, HA can change phenotype from scar producing to collagen type 1 producing. There is a normalization for the uh, activities. There is also um, a normalization of hydration level in the scars. There is a modulation of reaction of toward remodeling of hypertrophic scars. Altogether, all this um, uh, no, mechanism uh, creates regeneration of the scar fibrotic tissue with uh, uh, 
decreased growth of the scar tissue with uh, uh, decrease, uh, decrease um, symptoms associated with hypertrophic scars. Um, we saw good clinical results, so I just want to uh, present you with a few cases. Um, regarding the uh, material that we recommend to inject, uh, based on the, our experience and uh, uh, literature data, we think in that it should be cross-linking HA uh, with high molecular weight because high molecular weight uh, HA is associated with the suppression of the inflammatory reaction in the tissues. And in, in order to achieve uh, better penetration in the tight and dense scar tissue, we recommend to use uh, HA with high cohesivity and low elasticity. And uh, bilateral balance and restoration finance, from our experience, is a uh, good, um, good product that, uh, with which we can achieve clinical results. A um, few cases just to show you that um, even uh, initial results, uh, initial results of the treatment shows positive effect on the scars, diminishing, flattening the scars. And in this case, uh, the post-op treatment, uh, post-op patients were treated uh, with, uh, with profiler HA and uh, not only we achieved uh, flattening and uh, normalization of the color of the scar, but we also achieved decrease of pain and itching associated with, the, with the scars. And, uh, these two cases, one is uh, uh, treatment of hypertrophic scars after surgery uh, and uh, treatment of, uh, of uh, post-burn scar. Uh, not only uh, provided uh, the clinical results provided uh, softening of the scars, flattening of the scars, but also um, it provided uh, less pain and, uh, and less itching that was associated with both uh, scars. And also, um, we were able to achieve in, in the second case. We were able in the second case we were able to achieve. Uh, increase range of uh, articulation because the main uh, complaint of this uh, uh, this patient was uh, inability to raise the hand, um, which was very uh, limiting uh, and uh, li limiting for the patient in her activities in the everyday uh, activities. Uh, and another just uh, case of where. Um, post-surgical scars were treated with non cross HA, um, but this is just an anecdotal case. Uh, we probably need to look more into comparison results between uh, use of cross-link HA and non cross HA. And um, uh, in this time, I'm, I'm going to conclude my presentation, and I'll be looking at uh, uh, your questions. If you have a questions, please feel free to send me a message. I think this webinar allows you to send a message and I will be happy to answer them. While we are uh, waiting for the um, for the questions from the attendees, I just want to mention that um, the treatment process is um, very easy to perform because we can easily achieve um, penetration in the scar with the jet injections, comparing to the legal injection, which required certain force and uh, has uh, physical limitations. Plus, uh, we need to mention that there is a pain, a certain pain level associated with the needle injections. With the jet injection, the pain level is much, much lower because the jet penetrates through the scar and through the, uh, 
the, the uh, skin very fast. I remember in the beginning of my presentation, I mentioned uh, maximum speed of 150 meters per second. Um, that allows the momentum of the skin penetration or penetration or scar penetration to be very, very short. So the so the um, time uh, that uh, of firing pain receptors is extremely uh, small. So the that provides a very low level of discomfort. Also, um, immediate spread of uh, of injected material also diminished um, pressure or stress on the surrounding skin, uh, surrounding tissue, that which is also diminishing the the uh, discomfort comparing to the comparing to the needle injection where uh, the bolus of the material injected in the in the, in the scar and all which in, uh, provide and causes certain uh, certain pressure on the scalp tissue. Okay, we have a first um, questions. Okay. Uh, the question, is there any protocol about use of pipe and fuel in hypertrophic uh, alkaloids? When to combine it with corticosteroids, or when not to use it in combination? Um, we have experience with uh, both treatment approaches, um, with um, uh, treatment of corticosteroids and with treatment of uh, combination five fuel and uh, uh, five fuel corticosteroids based on um, literature uh, which is which puts uh, this combination on more safer uh, uh, level comparing to the monotherapy of the of the uh, using of only uh, alone or just using uh, I with you, well, I can say that uh, from our experience, uh, we probably uh, incline more on using combination. However, it depends on the on on your experience or, or your what you prefer in your clinic. Because as far as uh, I understand, since the five with you is um, uh, anti-cancer drug and uh, it not um, everywhere it can be used in clinic levels. Usually it uh, can be used in the hospital level, uh, treatment facilities. So that depends on the, on the situation. Uh, another question. So, other than Profile or any other brands of HA you are using? Um, you can use any brand. Basically, what you need to look for is um, uh, certain uh, characteristics that I mentioned. For example, uh, uh, for treatment of uh, for, uh, atrophic scars, we're looking for cross-link IHA, which has a, which has a, a low cohesivity that will provide uh, volumization of the scar versus um, versus uh, hypertrophic, the so treatment of hypertrophic scar, we recommend to use cross-link with higher cohesivity. And uh, as far as I know, um, any brand has the line of the products that you can select uh, certain characteristics uh, that you uh, that you need. Uh, for example, in the Belotero uh, line of products, Belotero Balance will be good for uh, for um, treatment of hypertrophic scars in the Restylane line of products, Restylane Finesse would be good for um, for treatment of uh, hypertrophic scars in Juvederm line of products. Uh, Juvederm uh, Voluma can be used for treatment of atrophic scars. So it depends on um, what's your preference line of products. Um, Can we use non-cross-link HA in the treatment of acne scars? Um, 
Good questions. Um, it is possible, but I think uh, you will see less um, less clinical results comparing to use of course link because you still uh, rely on initial uh, uh, hydration and volumization effect, which is uh, which cross link uh, HA has a better uh, ability to provide comparing to the non cross link. Um, so my preference would be to use cross link comparing to the non cross link. Uh, another question. Can transexamic acid be used if yes, then any protocol for the same? Um, the only um, indication that we have some experience of using uh, transexamic uh, trans acid is the treatment of, um, of uh, pig pigmentation. Um, so we have uh, very limited experience with that um, and very mixed results. So theoretically, yes, it can be used. I know that people are using, but um, can we provide um, clinical data behind this claim? Um, not so far. It's not our main focus right now. Um, the main focus of, uh, of the company right now is a treatment of scar tissue in which um, we, we achieve very good clinical results. Uh, how painful this procedure is? Um, um, pain is uh, um, not the word that should be associated with the treatment of uh, with the treatment with the jet injection. It's a rather uh, discomfort or impact feeling that patient, uh, the patients are uh, reporting. Because as, as I mentioned, the speed of penetration is so high that pain receptors are not um, really irritated. It does, just doesn't have the time for irritation of these non-receptors no in the skin. Um, what is irritated or fired are receptors that are responsible for distension uh, in the skin. So um, overall, I should say that um, this uh, discomfort that associated with, uh, with injection, the level of this feeling is very low in the majority of the studies that are published and related to the jet injection. Um, Pain, uh, the level is very low from uh, from 2 to 4 on the 0 to 10 uh, scale. Uh, another question, can we use PRP to be injected with JET? Um, it's a little bit controversial question for us because the device is currently regulated only for injection of therapeutic materials, not uh, regulated for use of uh, biological materials, which is uh, PRP can be classified as. Um, so I cannot really uh, talk about that. Uh, there is a, not only from regulatory point of view, but also from, kind of view, uh, from the company point of view, we are very much concerned about the potential of uh, cross-contamination since between the patients. Um, although we we uh, we have certain uh, cleaning protocol, but the clinic clean protocol is not designed for specifically for use of uh, bloodborne products. So um, that's all I can answer for your question. Okay, another question. How do you compare results of energy against microneedle, RF, and CO2 in the scars? Also want to know what benefits energy have against uh, uh, microneedle, RF, or CO2. Um, first of all, I, I want to say that we did not um, conduct any comparative study. Um, the 
um, from the practical point of view, uh, I still want to mention that uh, the ability of energy to penetrate much deeper uh, comparing to uh, CO2 laser or comparing to uh, a microneedling RF uh, probably will give some kind of um, benefit for the treatment of uh, uh, big bulky uh, scar tissue. However, uh, I think that combination therapy uh, combining energy treatment and uh, CO2 laser will be very beneficial for the patient, depends on the situation. So my answer is no, we didn't compare, but uh, combination of these treatments will be uh, can be used in the everyday practice. Post-treatment advice. Um, well, post-treatment advice, that advice that we usually give in to the patients is um, to keep the area clean because um, even though the, the treatment is uh, very easy to perform, but it's still invasive, uh, invasive treatment. So we are always concerned about development of infection after the treatment. So educate your patient to keep the area clean. That's all we can say. Um, uh, we, don't, we don't put any specific restrictions. Uh, we don't recommend to use any antibiotic uh, creams after the treatment. If the treatment performed in aseptic conditions, um, you are not exposed to any uh, chance of infection unless your patient is really um, is really not listening to your recommendations. Uh, so nothing specific. Okay, another question. How different is Energet from Dermajet apart from controlling the depth of injection? Um, good question. Uh, mm -hmm. The difference is mainly in uh, in uh, technical um, characteristics of this, of these two devices, because Dermajet is a device that uh, inject. In, although the principle of injection is the same, uh, the use of liquid jet, uh, Dermajet injects it at the uh, only one level of pressure and quite high level of pressure. And so the depth of penetration is not, uh, so the operator cannot control the depth of penetration. That's why um, in the literature you can find a lot of uh, reports um, about adverse events, about uh, trauma associated with uh, with uh, dermogen. Also, the uh, range of dosage that can be delivered with uh, Dermojet is very limited. As far as I remember correctly, it's only three levels, uh, uh, three different dosage that can be delivered with Dermojet. Um, Dermojet is um, well known of associated with uh, uh, infection. You can find a lot of reports in the public, in the literature. Um, the um, Energet is still uh, has a very low rate of uh, infection because uh, the uh, accessories provided with Energet are single use and provided sterile, comparing to Dermojet that requires to be additionally sterilized. sterilized. So, um, so low level of side effects, low level of pain that and um, easy and friendliness of use uh, puts um, energy to the much higher level compared to the damage. Um, plus, don't forget that uh, uh, energy is very easy to operate and adjust the uh, 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 injection parameters. Um, so just uh, it's a device of 21st century comparing to the Dermajet, which is, uh, as far as I remember, was invented in 1950s or something. Like that. So, uh, 
another question. Parameters for atrophic scars and hypertrophic scars. Can you show demo again if possible? Um, okay, um, let me go back to my presentation. Just a second. So for atrophic scars, we recommend to start uh, with injection pre uh, pressure 2530. Um, for majority of the cases, it's enough to achieve uh, good penetration. Filling level, we not recommend to use very high level. 70 to 80 micrograms will be enough. Um, you need to inject directly into the scar um, and um, for majority of the scars, just one injection will be enough. Although sometimes you have a very big uh, rolling scar, so do several injections to cover the bottom of the scars. Um, or just change, change, find a slide regarding hypertrophic scars and keloids. For hypertrophic scars and keloids, uh, we recommend just a second. We recommend injection pressure starting from 40, 45, and up to the level that you can achieve good penetration. In this case that you see the video, the pressure was uh, at 40%, uh, percent and um, filling level was uh, uh, 90 microliters. Mm, for my experience, uh, for older scars, older calorie scars, you probably need to treat uh, at uh, injection pressure 60, 70, depending on the bulkiness of the scar, depending on the uh, density of the scars. Okay, um, another question. How do you decide the dose of injection materials? Uh, the rationale is uh, based on the uh, our experience. Uh, our rationale was um, that we uh, some time ago we decided that the more material will be injected. Uh, in the let's say in the atrophic scar, the better results will achieve. And then um, looking at the results, we didn't see the difference in terms of uh, uh, the difference between uh, difference in the results achieved by different uh, dosage. Uh, so for treatment atrophic scars, we understood that yes, uh, the hyaluronic acid provides the initial effect. But the main effect, the clinical effect that we're looking for is just is a regeneration of the tissue that's um, uh, caused or uh, provided by the microtrauma that we create in the tissue. That's regarding the atrophic scar. <clears throat> regarding the <clears throat> treatment of uh, hypertrophic scars and keloids, um, you need to. Uh, realize that um, you have a certain limitation in how much medication can be delivered to the scar because uh, there is a certain uh, toxic level that uh, can should be avoided by injecting uh, corticosteroids or part of you uh, the manufacturer's recommendation for for example, for trium cyanalone, <clears throat> is um, not to um, not to uh, administer more than 60 milligram uh, of trium cyanalone uh, per day um, when you're treating intralesional when you provide an intralesional uh, administration of trium cyanalone. For 5 of you, uh, this number is higher. It's 500 milligram, but it should not um, be higher than uh, 500 milligrams when you're treating um, 
divisions in two weeks. So basically not higher than 500 grams in two weeks leading to the education. In our practice, uh, we usually we're not achieving, or we're not reaching this higher point. So uh, we stay uh, of delivering approximately on average uh, 20, 30 milligram of uh, of tramsel alone, a very large uh, scar. Okay, longevity with cross-link HA and non-cross-link HA, and what is the treatment protocol for both HA totals sessions required? Um, <clears throat> depends what you are treating for. Uh, if we're talking about uh, atrophic scars, acne scars, um, the, uh, we usually recommend uh, to have a uh, Three treatment sessions, one month in between. Um, regarding longevity of cross-link HA and non-cross-link HA, uh, we did not uh, conduct any uh, specific study looking for longevity or effect. Um, for uh, trophic scars, uh, once you have a correction of the scar or the modeling, Improvement of appearance of the scars. It's uh, there is no reverse effect. Uh, there is no uh, reverse effect. So it's hard to say the longevity. Um, we have limited, very limited uh, experience of using non-cross link in shape of treatment uh, of acne scars. Um, Several cases that I personally performed, I was able to achieve good results, but no comparison to the uh, study that was performed. However, the protocol we used, we used the same protocol, uh, three treatments uh, with one month in between the treatments. It will be nice to have, uh, if you can share your experience with non costing uh, we would love to see the results. So maybe they will, we, we can provide identification of our initial results. Another question. <clears throat> what all other fractional, uh, fractional technology can be combined? Um, we have some um, experience of uh, combination therapy with, uh, uh, for treatment of acne scars. <clears throat> We notice that um, not always uh, you can not always you can achieve um, complete uh, complete treatment of complete improvements with uh, Energet. Although uh, Energet, as I mentioned, can uh, uh, provide a raising bottom of the scar to a certain level, but sometimes uh, <clears throat> we can reach. A certain level and there is no further improvement. So in this case, uh, the treatment can be combined with a fractional laser for additional uh, resurfacing, uh, which would be uh, the optimal, would provide optimal effect. So that's, uh, this kind of cases can be nice to uh, treat. Um, and for, for more younger scars, uh, we have good results with energy without uh, need for additional function treatment. So it depends on the <clears throat> it depends on the clinical situation for, for every case. Uh, another question: Can we use PPC for spotting for treatment of cellulite and localized adipocytes with energy? <clears throat> um, you have to be very careful about PPC because um, uh, because uh, it's still uh, this chemical still can provide a damaging effect to the uh, dermis. And uh, some time ago, we, we did uh, preclinical experiments on uh, on the pig tissue on pig skin tissue, and we saw that. Even when the jet propagates directly into the uh, adipose, adipose tissue, 
uh, it still uh, have some uh, traces of the uh, uh, injected drug who, who was found in the dermis. So it raised our concern for using this uh, type of uh, treat, uh, medication for the uh, for the cellular. Um, you can inject for cellulite, you can inject other medications. Uh, I know that uh, some users in uh, <clears throat> in uh, Latin American uh, countries uh, uh, have a good experience with that. Uh, again, no studies were found uh, were performed, so just uh, cases uh, that appears on the internet that people were followed. Uh, in general, um, yes, um, energy can be used uh, for treatment uh, for reaching the adipose tissue, but uh, specific protocols is not uh, developed. Um, um, it will be interesting to learn more about that. As I mentioned, um, if you uh, have some good cases, uh, we'll be glad to, to see them. Our communication with the users is always a two-way street. So we, we're sharing our experience with, uh, with users and uh, we're collecting uh, new data, new information, uh, new achievements for our users. So. You are welcome to share your experience with us. Okay, another question. Uh, thank you, Doctor, for your time. Okay, thank you everybody for your participation. Um, I'm glad that you were able to, uh, to spend some time with us uh, and participate and attend our uh, inter uh, webinar. Feel free to send me questions. Thank you very much. Bye bye.